Hello, welcome to White Horse Music TV. <sighs> my name is Richard Badina, and I'm co-owner of this wonderful shop with my lovely wife, Michelle Badina, who is not this cello. Um, and today is a very exciting day, and you knew this day would come. It is the day where I will be showing you a couple of student cellos that are full size. Just so you can see what's available in that sort of uh, student end currently at White Horse Music. Uh, so first up, we have this one called a Stentor 2 cello. Hello, Mr. Stentor 2. This one is set up with um, Yaga strings, which are the ones which are those sort of light blue ones. That's called silking, that bit down there. It's got light blue silking on the strings so that you can recognise what sort of strings they are. It's been set up, professionally set up, by myself actually. There you go. Um, it has a very sort of, you know, shiny, transparent varnish and a walnut sort of look. It is the Stentor 2, which is the more expensive of the two standard student models of the Stentors. There's one called Stentor 1, which has, instead of an ebony fingerboard, I think it's rosewood or some other wood, which is painted black to look like ebony, and it does wear through eventually, and it's not, not a great thing that way. I don't stock that one, by the way. I will start them at Stentor 2. Um, it uh, is a, a pretty looking cello, and they're quite dependable. They're um, made under the influence of an English company. I believe made in China, probably, as most things in this price range goes. And this one, and the other one that I'm going to show you, has been set up at White Horse Music, which is really important. I have spent about four or five hours making all the parts for this cello, and it makes a huge difference. These cellos... I am sorry to say, sound like trash before they've been set up and are just about impossible to play. That is the honest truth of it. Um, I really should do a video, I will do a video, where I um, demonstrate the difference between one that hasn't been set up and one that has been set up. Oh, do that, yeah, I'll do that, okay. Um, but, so with this one, I have made a new bridge. So I've thrown out the low quality bridge that originally came with it. And we've carved a new one out of much higher quality wood. It makes an enormous difference to the, the way the vibrations are transferred from the bridge to the body. So that maple makes a huge difference. It means that I can shape the bridge so it's easier to play on the individual strings. So many times have I seen people who have bought cellos from general music stores or from eBay and that sort of thing, and they come in and you just cannot play one string at once because the bridge is almost completely flat trying to play one string. Ridiculous. Um, so we make a new bridge. On this particular one, I've put Yaga strings, the one with the light blue colouring, the silking. Um, we've planed the fingerboard so that it is as smooth as it can be. And also, um, it does change the sound. Like it allows the strings to vibrate the way they should rather than having inconsistent different distance between the string and where it's possibly hitting the fingerboard. So that makes a big difference to the sound. Um, and then we refit the peg so they're less likely to slip out of tune. We lower this part, the nut, so you get the right height of the strings along here. In terms of the bridge and the nut and the planing of the fingerboard, they all make a difference to how, um, how high the strings are as you're pressing them down on the fingerboard. And they, those things, they all make a difference to the sound as well. Then I also, make a brand new sound post inside every cello out of better quality wood and I make it fit so it's like vacuum fit and I position it so that I get the most even sound across the cello. It's a huge job but it is so worth doing. If you set up a cello, I will put out, I'm putting this out there, if when we set up a $1,000 cello it sounds enormously better than a $3,000 cello that hasn't been set up. It makes that much of a difference. I will finish that rant right there. My God, this is about these student cellos, not about setups. Anyway, um, this is the Stentor 2 cello to start with.
surprising amount of depth for a cello. It is a little bit deeper, like thicker in this way than some other cello. It seems to have like a quite a big resonating interior. So that's a, a really cool thing. I think it's sort of maybe slower responding than some other cellos, um, but the sound that you get out if you work for it is quite thick and full. So now I'll play those open strings again. Okay, and then I'll jump to the next one. This one is a Schumann Prodigy cello. Okay, different sound. So, this Schumann Prodigy, come and have a bit of a look. Okay, it's a slightly different varnish. It's maybe not quite as shiny as the Stentor. And it's more of a two-tone sort of varnish, like it's, it's reddish colour over a, a golden sort of ground. And then it's sort of like faded to the flanks as if it's, you know, very mildly antiqued in that way. I think possibly for looks alone, the Schumann, in my opinion, has it slightly over the Stentor, just because it's like the, the varnish is maybe a little bit thinner and it's you know like a more slightly more interesting color in that it's it's got more shades and then um also the thinness of the varnish is a good thing often sort of like sound wise if you can see you can see the grain and you can sort of feel the grain a little bit and that allows the wood to vibrate the way it wants to you don't want a, a hugely thick varnish i mean the stentor varnish is not hugely thick but certainly the varnish on the Schumann is a little bit thicker, uh, thinner, which is a good thing. Once again, it's been set up in our workshop. There's our very cute bridge, and we've chosen particular strings for this style of this particular cello. These ones are called Larsen and Helicore strings. The other ones were called La, uh, called Yaga. I set them up, and then I will choose the strings to suit that particular cello, and this one wants and deserves these particular strings. All right, let's see what it sounds like. between those as far as the sound goes. I would say this Schumann Prodigy is a little bit more ringing and resonant. You sort of hear the, the sound continue longer after you've taken your um, bow or finger off the note. So that's, that's one thing. I would say maybe the Stentor has a little tiny bit more depth in this case on the bottom string, which is a nice positive for that. I would say this one responded a little bit more easily. Like I mentioned the responding before, it's just because I'm originally a violin player and when I first went to playing cello, it was a huge effort and I'd play for five minutes and I'd be dead. Well, not dead, but I'd be, you know, lying on the ground. I'd have to be resuscitated because it was just so much work. I find the shoe a little bit less work like I'm lifting a heavier load. So that is um, a real positive for the Schumann. It's not, there's not that much in it. And um, I would say that some teachers would choose the Stentor and some would choose the Schumann Prodigy. But what I'm gonna do now is try to play a little bit of Bach Prelude. And I mean, that's the ultimate test. You have to play Bach Prelude on a cello to find out if it's good. <laughs>
we go. Let's try the Stentor. I'm sort of slightly kicking myself for almost tuning that cello, but move ahead. Let's try this Stentor, see what you think. <laughs> Exactly as I was saying before, I felt like I could get slightly sort of like deeper sound out of this one, but you could hear little mistakes from my sort of play, violin playing technique, trying to play cello, and um, you know it's it is definitely harder work on this stentor. So oh, I don't know. For me, from my background, I would probably go with the Schumann Prodigy for my for my own playing at home. But for someone else who maybe has a, you know, better cello technique, they might go with the Stentor. Actually, what you should do is buy both of them. Yes, then you can't go wrong. Definitely buy both of them. Thanks for watching.